Alright, hopefully he's able to use it now. And then... As much as I do want to deodorize this, the polluted- or the oxygen is, uh, not high enough anymore. So I gotta thin out the oxygen. I guess the only way is by pumping it up and mining it out, right? Feels bad. Once I release the chlorine, it's gonna pressurize a little bit more. Oh, the oxyphern right here. It's giving us more O2. I guess that's- oh my god, 4,000 grams? Am I getting to a high pressure area? I mean, we have suits, so I don't have to worry about that, I don't think. Pop your drums. Oh! <gasps> no! Guess what, boys? We're out of oxygen. My suits are dying. Oh, God. <laughs> We're out of oxygen. Not like this. I need sand. Alright, so... I have to bop my polluted dirt deodorizers right here. Because they're utilizing all my sands. So I have to cut the power here for now. Which is fine. I don't need them running. We're dead! No, we're going to be fine. We have a lot of oxygen outside. I just need them to crush the sand a little bit. Make that a high priority. And then cut my consumption by turning off my deodorizers in some of the problematic areas. And then try to come back. There's a little bit of sand here too. Hopefully it's not too bad. Oh man. <laughs> I ran out of sand, dude. I can't believe it. And then we'll have a grooming station right here. And then most likely it's food. We'll put six for now. I might have to put a wall so that they don't travel as much. And then after that... That was my pain the whole time. I use sublim uh, sublimation stations on the swampy start. Running out of sand all the time? Yeah, dude, it's a struggle. That's one of the things sometimes, not having sand at the top. Having the regolith there was kind of nice. Now I'm just crushing sandstone all the time. Alright, so I think I will want to make a meta refinery setup. And I probably want... Hmm, guys. So, I did want to make an industrial brick. That was something I wanted to make. So, maybe we want to set that up instead. Now, the thing is, is that I also want to relocate my power system. Although this works, I might want to not have that here and move that somewhere, uh, somewhere closer. Now, we could technically move it into this room and have it go out. That wouldn't be that bad. All the Slicksters died, but they laid eggs. Not bad, not bad. Boiling pea water is not that bad. I guess that's true. I'm thinking about making our industrial brick, though. Now, the thing is, is that the ethanol generates a lot of CO2. Same with the petroleum gen. So I can't have that in the industrial brick. That might mean that I can't use this volcano. Because this isn't such a bad spot. It's in such a bad spot. There's no way I could really utilize that here. Oh. You know, that's an option. Technically, I could put the pet uh, petroleum generators on top. And then just expand this room as a larger slickster room. The problem with this is, I have no temperature control. It's only going to get hotter, right? 
<laughs> I'm realizing that. There's no way for me to temperature control this. Holy crap. Hmm. Alright, so let's get rid of the gas. Because none of this is going to be necessary anymore. Because we used to pump the CO2 in for the slicksters to consume. But now that we have to add them all to feed them, that's no longer necessary. So, we'll start bumping the gas reservoirs. Another thing we could bop is this electrolyzer. This is technically not needed anymore, to be honest. And if I do put the petroleum generators in... I think that's not... Oh! We move the petroleum generators here. But we keep the cooling loop with the salt water. And the reason would be is so that we could have controlled temperature. And then we could dump the 30 degree CO2 into the 90 degree CO2 to cool it down. That way it's not as drastic. We have a place to dump the CO2. And then the Slicksters don't really worry that much about it. Because we don't want... Well, we could get Moltens, but I don't really want to have them as Moltens. I want to keep it as oil if possible. This is sweep only, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I think that that's a better play. I honestly think that's a better play. So one thing about it is this cooling loop is kind of useless. So let me just move all the liquid out. So that's going to be the first thing I want to do. I also want to remove this pipeline. Why are they not digging those three tiles? I don't think anyone has digging priority. Oh, I didn't set up the priority for any of my new dupes. I see you, Rambo. How you doing today? Looks like I'm a little bit behind. <laughs> Hope you're doing well, man. Nice. Good to hear that you're doing good. How are you? We doing all right? Just trying to progress on the colonies. You know what it is. But otherwise, man, gotta take it a day at a time. Oh yeah, I need to make fire poles too. No, no, they are worth it. They are worth it. I gotta make them though. I just gotta make them. Ah, oh, man, that shut off. I could probably get rid of that now though. No longer mechanical filtering the oxygen. So we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll move the Sweetos into here. And then from there, got to move out the water from here. Try to clean up this room of the salt water. And I probably wanted to extend out to here. So I probably want to have the ladders done like that. This is a regular tile. We'll probably change that later because we're going to extend this down vertically. And all the gas went out. Nice. So I could get rid of all the gas stuff here then and get rid of the vents. Progress. Sweetos are in. Let's go. Wait, are we not able? How come no one's delivering the mule? Oh, someone is. I was like, why is no one delivering the mule lice to this? <laughs> Geek is literally trying to pick up as much mule lice as he can. Dude. This is priority 7 and it's still a struggle. I have so much meal lice on the ground, man. It feels so weird. 
Hey, Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow, I see you over there. Coming in with the 34 months on that 34 month streak. I see you over there. Yo, Legitizens, look who hit 34. Can I get a what, what? How about just a VIP? I see you over there, Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow. I would give you the VIP, but you're not here, man. <laughs> Like, it would be easy, but it's like, you're always working. I appreciate you lurking all the time, though. You know what? Maybe we'll give you the VIP. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. You know what's coming up, though? The three-year mark? That's looking like a good good three-year thing, man. All three years get, get VIP. That could be something we could, you know, discuss. <laughs> Everyone over three years can get the What the hell is this? Why is this holding everything? Is this right? Let me uncheck that. Man. Gotta pay the mortgage. Gotcha, gotcha, man. I know it'd be like that sometimes. I see you over there, Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see about the VIP stats. Appreciate the support though, and of course, welcome back to the city. Enjoy the emotes, D20 dies ad free viewing. Don't forget that legit sub badge. But thank you so much for the support, Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow. I see you over there, man. My sand is still at zero. Oh, I never made this work. Oh my god. This has been hamster wheel powered aqua tuners. I didn't even notice that. This is a hamster wheel power aqua tuner. <laughs> it was working. That's really gross. I can't believe that actually worked. Alright, so we have that there. We're going to move our petrol gens over to here. And I need to build the reservoir. Oh, the water's hot. I wonder if it's going to break my reservoir. That's something to think about. Man, it feels like my dupes are taking a long time to build. Oh, it's because I don't have the priority set. Ah, uh, okay. So, let's start at the top. Let's make sure everyone's correct. Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow, we start with you. We're going to go into your bio. I'm going to go into the priorities. So, research rocketry. Research rocketry. Nice. So, everyone else after that looks good. Till we get to Clash. Clash is a operating tidy op. Wait. I can't see it. Build tidy operating. So Clash is build tidy operating. Should be fine. Spell more. Build supply dig. Not bad. We'll give you tidy minus. And then tan it. Build doctor research. Research building. We'll allow you to do doctoring. And then after that, we will have you do... The excavation skill comes from the uh, suit, I believe. Coopin Hammond. Dr. Ranch. He's an actual vet. Okay. Oh, crap. There we go. Then we have Geek. I can't see that. Geek is going to be Dr. Ranch Supply. Another rancher. And then Supply Store. And then we'll do a little bit of farming and tidy. Silent One. Silent One is pure... I have a lot of ranchers, dude. Holy crap. We'll have you do farming as well. Alright, so that means... Do you guys have the skills to do the jobs? It looks like they do. We should be fine. Speed this up. Alright, alright. The sand is not accumulating. I'm out of power right here. Okay. My dupes are no longer running the wheel. Oh no! Is this the beginning of disaster? Nah, I think we'll be fine. 
so it might be time to do some more research. All right. And now we're just kind of waiting. I think I got to I got to get more dupes, man. This is a little bit slower than what I'm used to. I might want to get more dupes or automate more of the jobs. Might gotta do it, man. Alright, gotta get rid of that. Now, at this point... We could go for more suits, because it looks like we don't have enough suit docks to kind of keep 16 people alive. <laughs> oh, man. We're just missing so many suits. Oh, this is not... I need to make the suit repairs max priority. Do we actually have worn out suits right here? Worn suit one. What are these? What are these dock icons? It's a waiting delivery. That means a suit actually worn out, right? I don't have any suit repair anywhere else. Where are my worn suits? Oh god, are they actually in the storage right here? Oh, uh, that's actually possible. Is this allowed? Oh, it is. <laughs> you cannot. Oh my god, if they swept out the worn suits to here, they need to wear a suit to get the suit out. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. And I need someone running on this wheel now for this to work. Oh god. So many things are happening and they're going wrong. I might take the bristle berries. So that I can make a uh, berry sludge. That's only three units. I'll take the nutrient bars. Yo man, can we get some runners in chat? <laughs> Alright, actually priority nine. Because it's actually important. Suits can't charge, man. What are my dupes doing? How are you idle? <gasps> this is not set on forever. Oh my god. He's been doing nothing in space. I can't believe this. I haven't been getting databanks. And they're not mining this. Yo, what are my dupes doing? It feels like they're slacking, man. What's happening right now? What is happening right now? They're all sweeping. Oh, it's because we have a lot of tight ears. Is that is that the case? One, two, and then it's a minor plus. That shouldn't be that bad. Hmm. Maybe it's this wheel that's causing me some issues. Maybe I just need another power line. I think regardless, it should be fine. So, let's just continue. Take the water out. We're going to collapse this line. Once the water is out. That's funny. It actually doesn't interact with the content. That's pretty interesting. So, we'll take that out. And then we will remove all the piping from here. And then once we're done with that... We are going to extend this down. We got the ladders done. Nice. And then we'll want to cap that off. And then we'll open this for the slicksters to move in. We'll remove one of the airflow tiles. So we still get the CO2 from the bottom. Should be okay. And then we'll move the petroleum gens over to here. I think that's going to work nice. I'm also not going to need the hydrogen anymore. So that's going to be pretty convenient. Alright, so CO2 is still a lot. We're waiting for the dupes to just finish jobs now. Oh, man. Oh, it's a water issue again. Come on. There's never enough sand, dude. Holy crap. Alright. 
I am going to run this line off of the freaking petroleum line. <laughs> no more waiting, man. I'm tired of having someone run the wheel. We gotta build that and then deconstruct the wheel. But if they're running that now and they're able to use that, we'll let them run that. I think I have too many wheels everywhere, causing the dupes to have to run there, turn on the power, and then run back out. Wow, that was done with the quickness. Alright, take that out. Take this in. Take that here. And then you're still running when you're not supposed to. And we'll take that out right there. No waters, that's cool. And the ethanol is backed up. That's actually a good sign. So that means that the ethanol is topped off. And we're pretty much positive on the generation. All right, now we just need the last tile, and then we could tar uh, start deconstructing the insulator from the inside. Oh, that spill! That's actually fine. Oh, look at that viscosity. Look at that water tile. Nice tannin, good stuff, good stuff. So there is a power line in there. So I'm better off doing this. And then there is another line in there. So I am better off doing that. So I could reroute the line. Having it inside the tiles is typically going to be better just for looking purposes. We're going to want to mop that up. And we're still out of sand. This is rolling a little bit, but... Dude. I might just have to put this on forever, man. I do not have enough sand to run the system that I want to run. So technically, I could feed this guy polluted dirt, and it'll give me sand. But I want the polluted dirt, but I can't use it if I don't have sand. That's such a weird dilemma. I could get more sand at the cost of oxygen generation. In which case, if I overspend, it's pointless, because I wouldn't have anything to clean. That's really... A predicament, man. That's kind of weird, but it is what it is. And we're almost out of, uh, we have water here. Oh, I can't reach that. I can't reach that. I need to get the airflow tile. I got to remove the canister empty here. <laughs> Just one crab won't eat that much. That's true. That's true. I'd rather feed a sandy shell, though. I'd rather feed a sandy shell. Just because I get shellfish. <laughs> shellfish meat, man. You gotta get that sweet, sweet shellfish. He's gonna be fine. There's a lot of mealwood right here, though. It's kind of weird that no one's sweeping those items. I have so much mealwood that I don't think we could store it all. Like, what's going on here? How to how do? What's going on, Mordax? How are you today? How is the Tuesdays? And you have a bunch of ethanol gens. This is true, but I was I was so low on dirt earlier. I was so low on dirt earlier. I was worried. Do it, I. Nice, nice. Tuesdays are doing all right. That's not too bad. Hey, that's Pog. That's always nice, man. Good to hear. Good to hear. Oh, pump up, pump up the salt water. It's fine. Pump it up, boys. It's time. And then we'll go for Radbo Rocket. A lot of times, man. People underestimate apologizing. I feel like 
in the world we live in today, that's one of the most underrated things in the world. That people make up some bullshit or it's ego that go, I can't apologize. That makes me look like the lesser man. And some, you know, they they make themselves believe that. Where it's it's all crap, right? And it's like, no man, be a decent human being. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> and it's like, if I'm wrong, I, I admit it. Like, I have to... The, the thing is, though, it's like, you have to have the clear conscience. Where it's it's like, you know, you did something bad, you should apologize. That's what, you know, that's what makes us human. And it doesn't make you less of a man or anything stupid like that. But it's it's just the world we live in, man. It's crazy. Now, the thing is, is that he apologized. That's nice. Because usually bosses at, at the top of the uh, totem pole, for lack of better words, they're going to be like, it's not going to matter. <laughs> I'm not going to. They don't really want to do it, you know. But it's it's a big show of character. And having a boss that's willing to apologize, it's, it's typically a, a better sign, even if he was being an ass. The real test is if they actually change the behavior after. That's true too. That's true too. They gotta walk the walk. Apologizing, admitting you were wrong, and the best case, learn something, is pretty manly IMO. I, I would say that it's not that it's manly or not manly. Because I hate to put tags on things like that. I would say that it's something we need to teach each other not that we're all bad or good at it but there's times where it's like man we just gotta accept it and a lot of the times who knows where it stems from you know maybe there's a ulterior motive reason why not but yeah i, I would have to agree that it's positive i just wouldn't like having the tag on it that it's manly or not manly because i don't want to have it painted in the same light where it's like oh we do this because we're we're men and things like that and it's like nah i, I don't want to have that it's more so we do this because that's that's the right thing to do i showed him a pic of my family i explained to him the term really upsets ah uh, yes 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 i hope he was uh you know maybe more apologetic ice ice baby how am i gonna say no to ice I mean, it's not ice cream, though. Feels bad. It's mature. I only choose manly because you mentioned something like that. Not man enough. That's true. I feel that. I feel that. Mature is a good word. Mature is a good word. Mature is a good word. I told him it doesn't matter how upset, angry, or mad he is. It's human decency to not insult and uh, drop motherfucker bombs at everyone. But I do that. I drop MF bombs like I'm Samuel Jackson. This motherfucker said I couldn't have a Royale with cheese. You know, they call that a Royale because they don't have quarter pounders in the in the UK. Because that's currency, baby. Did you put this motherfucking steak on this motherfucking plane? Yo, man. I feel that, though, Mordex. <laughs> I was just trying to make light of it. Drop some Samuel L. Jackson lines. But yeah, dude. Hopefully he reacted. Not Not that you need to react accordingly. But, you know, like Cthulhu said, it's it's a lot to say something, but a lot of that doesn't mean anything if you don't back it up. I haven't seen Pulp Fiction. I haven't. Don't expose me, Cthulhu. Come on, man. We went over this. I don't watch a lot of movies. <laughs> I haven't seen Star Wars. I haven't seen The Hobbit. I haven't seen Lord of the Rings. I haven't seen Harry Potter. Now, I say that, in response to not seeing the entire series. I've seen individual movies or snippets of all of those movies. I've never seen the entire series. You call yourself a nerd. I didn't call myself a nerd. You guys call me a nerd. <laughs> what are you guys talking about, man? Did you even know it was from Pulp Fiction? Yeah, I I've seen the memes. And I've seen the clip of Samuel L. Jackson eating the burger. And it wasn't that after the scene where they uh, go to the apartment. And they go to these guys that they're like just chill dudes. 
and they just kind of break in and intimidate them. And then he explains the Royale with cheese or something like that. It's at the apartment. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I was right. See, if Cthulhu didn't expose me, you guys would have all thought I saw the movie. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just saying. If Cthulhu didn't expose me, man, y'all would have been like, oh, legit, I actually saw some for once. And I would have been like, uh, yeah, I did. Totally. <laughs> Yo, man, they don't think it'd be like it is, but it do. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? I know that scene, too. I, I don't know, man. The Royale Cheese is to walk up the stairs, then to the kid who's trying to steal the, uh, steal from Wallace. Oh, okay, okay. Didn't, isn't there a scene where he's eating a burger and talking to John Travolta while he's driving? I remember that scene for some reason. That's the same one. Oh, 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 oh. so that's the drive before the walk up the stairs. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So, so I gotta be real. I think I grew up watching Samuel L. Jackson. Because, man. I don't know if I'm alone in this. I love to drop MF bombs. Like, my name is Samuel L. Jackson. I don't know why. It, it's, it feels kind of cathartic. <laughs> it's like, when I say it, it feels like I'm de-stressing. I don't know, man. Him and JT are hitmen going to the get the merc back from the thieves. Ah, I see, I see. Dude, does anyone in chat watch Pulp Fiction regularly? Oh, he's gonna get stuck. I gotta save him before he does that. Oh, he's gonna get stuck. No, no. Oh, it's too late. It's too late. You know where he is? He's going to magically jump up the cliff. I can't move him down. I tried to do this as he was... Ah, oh, he's going he's gonna to jump up. Oh, he fell. Okay, Pog. I thought he was going to jump up to the ledge. Oh, my God. I've seen him a few times. Snakes on a plane. That's it. You actually saw snakes on a plane. <laughs> Yo, man, I didn't even watch snakes on a plane, man. I've had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. It really is cathartic, but no one likes being called a stupid mf in. Oh yeah, it certainly is not a way to keep respect of your guys. Yeah, it's true. Hundred percent. That's that's losing your cool. I could see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I drop a lot of MF bombs when when you know you're chilling with the boys. It just feels like I don't know. So you guys might have noticed that sometimes when I'm thinking, you know, and like when I'm doing the Oni videos, and I know Cthulhu pointed this out, and he was one of the early people to point it out, and I appreciate it. But I didn't know I was repeating some of the word usage that I have. Like the same word over and over again. And what happened was, was that... Cthulhu let me know I was using the same word too much. I was like, oh, okay. That's good to know. And, you know... It makes sense. Now that I think about it, I kind of use those words as filler. So I could think and get my thoughts and gather them up a little bit better. And I think when I'm like hanging out with the homies... I used the word, the MF, dropped the MF bombs, so that I could think a little bit longer. <laughs> it's weird, but it's like, it starts to make sense. Like, oh yeah, that's, that kind of makes sense that I would do it like that. Yeah, yeah, talking talk is one thing. Yeah, well, work is different. 100%. I agree with that. I agree. At work is completely different. Like saying, um, or, ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not justifying anything for the boss. I'm just trying to, I guess, think about why I use it. If that makes sense. Like, I don't know why I, I, I drop those bombs a lot. 
I did grow up, you know, a lot of uh, rap music. Maybe that's part of it. But uh, yeah, man, I don't know why, but I do do that. Alright, the rad bolts are always overcharging. Should I try to do something with it? Nah, I think I I think that would just be overpulling. Yeah. So uh if I will use ethanol, I probably never have enough power consumption to use all of one power station. That's probably the truth. So I probably don't need to make a system for that. Maybe I should. I love how Samuel Jackson was in Star Wars and he insisted of having a purple lightsaber. I saw that clip. I saw that clip. It was funny, man. He's like, well, red's the bad guys, blues are the good guys. He's like, can I have purple? And then and then George Lucas was like, ah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> it, it makes it makes you wonder, man. Like Will that be part of the lore? Is Mace Windu somewhat special? I even know his character name, dude. That's his name, right? Mace Windu? Oh, he didn't know how to respond when a totem text him all that. Rest of the guy accept him. Told him I was going for a walk if good boss was not there. Ooh. Oh, damn. I see you, Mordax. Yo, man. Hope everything works out. But, dude, you gotta do what you gotta do. Mace is unique. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, have you guys seen um, Adventures of Sinbad? It's an anime, so I don't know if, if, if you guys have all seen it. But, basically, it, it talks about Sinbad as a mythical character. And I don't know if you guys have heard of The Legend of Sinbad, but it's kind of like a break off from another anime at the same time. So basically, it talks about how this guy uh, is like the chosen one in some regard. And what happens is that he, he goes on a legendary feat, does a lot of crazy stuff. However, um, in one of the battles, someone thought that, oh, if I just corrupt him, I will have the ultimate villain. And that was kind of the premise. So the entire time they were looking for him, and they finally found him, cornered him, and then corrupted him. And then the crazy thing was that when they corrupted him, they couldn't corrupt him. And they had to, they, they tried to find out why. And they f reveal that Sinbad has himself cursed. And he is cursed in a sense that he is always perfectly balanced. 50% evil, 50% good. And he's basically the epitome of yin yang. Right? That's kind of how that story went. So. I wonder, is Mace Windu similar in that regard? Maybe because he's part good, part bad, he gets purple? Every once in a while, a Force user is born with a unique ability. Mace is the only Force user that I know of that is able to use the ability of Shatterpoint. Oh. Interesting. Malden is right. Don't give a bad boss a reason to fire you. Wait for the good boss to be back. From vacation, ah. I mean, at that point, if he gets fired, wouldn't that be... Uh, what's that called? When unrightful termination? Something like that? It's very close. Ah, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if they took part of the storyline from Star Wars when they were making Sinbad. It's kind of crazy. Alright, so I know we're going to have to do this. So, we'll set it up now. And then... 
we'll do this. This electrolyzer, we're probably going to be okay to destroy it. And then I need to start counting my room. So if I go to 90, how much is a power control station? It's 96, right? 96 tiles. So this is a full 12 with a 3 base. So it doesn't have to be as long. So 3 times... What's a good number? 3 times... I usually have, what, 6 generators? He's able to refocus his opponent's aggression, anger, and dark side energy and reflect that back, making him stronger and more defensive. So that's why. So he's good in a sense. And he absorbs the bad, which gives him his purple. So is that the logic? <laughs> is, that the, is that the canon that we're going to go with? Called uh, the pad. Interesting, interesting. I see you over there, Mordax. You know a lot about this. Two tiles. So twenty. Okay, that's that's kind of perfect because it's on the side of the volcano. That kind of works pretty well. I'm not even mad about that. Nerd lol. <laughs> okay, Cthulhu, man. What a guy. <laughs> That's why he has a purple lightsaber, red plus blue. See, I thought about the red plus blue, which is the reason why I came to the idea of the Sinbad. Because I was thinking, well, if he's good and bad, so he's probably like Sinbad, where he's half half perfectly balanced. And. That makes it so that, you know, you get half of the color, of both colors, which makes the purple color. And I thought that just made a lot of sense. But that turns out to be exactly... Well, not exactly how it is, but it's very similar. Star Wars, D&D, comics, and more. Dude, comics are legit, dude. I haven't read any comics recently, but comics are legit. Oh, I could get rid of all this. Nice. And then the hydrogen's gonna be fine. Cool. So we are no longer going to add any water into here. So the bridge is gonna be gone. Nice. Man, I, is there any good comics that are out right now? The last thing I think I read was Dark Knight's Metal. Which was pretty good. It was pretty good, man. Mordex, have you seen it? I read a bunch of Star Wars Extended Universe books as a kid. A Were they canon, though? <laughs> That's all that matters. Were they canon? Was it, as they say in the business, legit? Ah, oh, crap. Oh, is he starving again? It's time to send him home, boys. Alright, we're going to drop off the water right there. It was before Disney destroyed everything. I'm sorry, what? I was texting my mom. Yo, man. I was asking, is there any good comics series right now? The last series I followed for the comics was Dark Knight's Metal on DC Comics. So I was curious. This is all brine? No, it's salt water. Nice. So what's what's George Lucas doing now? Is he trying to do a new series? Is he working with Disney? Or is it all just kind of like he's just chilling? Mud. Right now, Hulk comics are looking pretty good. Ah. Are they doing anything new? Or is it a lot of... Uh, you know, retelling of the old stories. 
Because I know they do that a lot. So in that universe, Batman's dead. You have Dick Grayson. He's actually playing the role of Batman? Or is he Robin? Or... Well... Dick Grayson is Nightwing, right? So that's Nightwing, not Robin Robin. There's a bunch of Star Wars stuff coming out, like the Kenobi series. Is he a part of that, though? He's Batman, so he's not Nightwing. He's actually Batman. Okay, that's crazy. I remember in one of the parallel universes... It was Batman was alive, Nightwing was alive, you had Robin alive too, and they were all working together. And then Batman from another universe comes out of nowhere and murders them all. <laughs> it, was, it was insane, dude. Bruce died, and then Dick Grayson had to take over, it feels bad. There's the whole Bat family. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember checking that out, man. It was pretty wild. Oh, it's all oxygen. Okay, cool. We'll just uh, mop this up. Nothing to see here. And then once this cools down the liquid, in which case I think we just go zero. Just let the water out. And then we can just remove the pipeline. Let's go. So we're just going to remove the tiles because we're going to want to clear out the space anyways. We'll leave the hydrogen there because it's still feeding. And we could use this power for something. Although there's not much we could really use it for. Maybe power this line, which is not too bad. Have that off of the wheel. Oh, this is on this setup. Oh, that's weird. Let me, let me actually separate that. That's coming from here. Batwan, Batman, Batwoman, Batgirl, Nightwing, Red Robin, Red Hood, Batwing, and Robin. Dude, that's that's a big list. That is a big list. Wait, hold up. Oh, and that was, and then the other one was a feed it. Okay. So we don't need this anymore. Which means I don't need that or this. Nice. Wait, so... The new Hulk comic. What's what's the storyline, Mordax? If you don't mind me asking. What's the premise for the new Hulk story? Is there anything I need to know beforehand? <laughs> Did he get abandoned on another planet by Iron Man and the Illuminati? Is this World Breaker Hulk? Juggernaut dies? So what happens? Is, is there a new... Uh, aspect? Is there a new aspect of... Um, what, what is it? Chaos Energy? What is that red energy called that Juggernaut taps into? Is there a new champion for him? I, I believe that's how he works, right? So the Juggernaut, even though they think he's a mutant, he's not. He's actually channeling the energy of another, like, something equivalent to Dormammu in an alternate dimension that's, like, all-powerful and rules his domain. And he basically was channeling his energy to become the Unstoppable. Yeah, there we go. It's, it's, that's his name. I, I forget that all the time. So, so... Is there someone else with the power, or is that him still just waiting to get uh get out? So he's an evil Green Lantern. No, that's different. So oh man, Green Lantern's even it's a lot different. Point of Garden. So Green Lantern, it's all about emotions, the emotions and the spectrum of all of the emotions. That's how it works. So Green has to do with willpower and determination. So, the Green Lantern only deals with the immediate willpower of the individual. So, the other colors of the Green Lanterns are actually there. There is red for rage, 
yellow, I believe. Not yellow. There is pink for love. Uh, but basically, there's a green lantern corpse for every emotion. I believe that's how that works. And they gravitate towards the people with the strongest form of that emotion. And that's where a lot of the original Green Lanterns come from, and why they're considered stronger than some of the other ones. Jug dies is in limbo, has to give up his power to return to life. Oh, shit. So is, is, is there going to be a new person that holds the gem? He finds his way to a god console, gets new armor and powers from one of the gods. So he doesn't become a champion of uh, Cyrorak, Cytrorak, and it's going to be a new new uh, basis for his power? Or is that how he gets the power from the get-go? It just sounds like they're just recycling his... <laughs> He's like, oh, we're just going to take the same character and give him different powers. It feels like it should be around the same, though. And then goes on a good guy spree? Why does it sound like when they redid Doctor Doom, dude? Did you did you read that? When Doctor Doom becomes a good guy? Mordex? And it's evil Reed Richards? Oh god, that was pretty good. I don't know if you saw that one. I might have spoiled it for you, because I was a big cliffhanger, man. Holy crap. I hope you saw that already. Because <laughs> I, I might have spoiled something bad. Oh my god. That was that was a great story though. I forget what was that one was called. Stop the Hulk from going on a rampage, forces him to sit trial and realize that he was a huge uh Hold up. It sounds very close to when they redid Doctor Doom, dude. A hundred percent. There was a there was a story in an alternate universe where Doctor Doom doesn't get the Doctor Doom persona. And I believe he still has his genius, but his power is not as it was when he was a bad guy. And I believe what happens is that he starts becoming a good person and he starts like saving a lot of the people from like the Avengers. Things like that. Man, I gotta remove my pipeline. Most of the time it's gonna be up here. And then the crazy thing was was that in that universe, because Dr. Evil, Dr. Evil, Dr. Doom didn't go evil, the guy that was good became evil. And it, it was crazy. Because at the end of everything, there's like... It's, it's crazy. It's like this weird realization from Dr. Doom. He has to do some weird crap. He understands that he could never beat Reed Richards. And the way he beats him is very weird. But it makes a lot of sense for the storyline. God damn it. I forgot the name of that story. Yo, man, does anyone know what I'm talking about? <laughs> does anyone know what I'm talking about, man? Man, all I know is that that was that was a great story. There we go. We get our vacuum, vacuum lock, and then we got to move all the salt water out. Get the new tiles. This is gonna be the new petrol gen area. So we got to get a new generator. So Y'all know what it is. Let's try to set that up right now. Uh, while we wait for that, we still need to set up more of the bedrooms for the citizens. We have enough plastic for this, so I'm not too worried. We just have to set up the rooms. And we'll start passing these out, man, for the people in chat. We know that you guys got dupes in the colony, so of course, we gotta make the living arrangements kinda nice.
Okay. And then it's over here. All right, right. Of course, guys, thank you guys for tuning in today. Thank you guys for being here on the channel. And of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to help you guys out. If you guys have any questions, of course, could be about anything. Just let me know if I can help. For whatever reason, I am still having a lot of CO2 and chlorine, and I can't seemingly keep up with it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess we could have some more CO2 storage. Deep fried peanut butter. I see you over there. You have any questions, man? I got you. Oh, the pump's in the way. Feels bad. And then for me to put it here, I have to trim the, uh, the room. Ah, I don't want to do that. Have you figured out how to deal with the air inside of the apartments? I was planning to do a carbon skimmer setup because with the carbon skimmer, I could technically have all of the apartments have their own pipeline in and out. And that way we could just have one sieve kind of just clean everything. But it would still have to be a good amount of water. Outside of that, that's the only way that really makes sense. Hold up. Can I even do that? I can't, right? Because there's no way for me to get power inside. Oh, shit. There's no way for me to get power inside. I just realized that. Because there's no power outlets. And even if I were to get the rocket extension port right here, I don't have a battery onto that. So I missed what you said to me. Oh, you got hit by the ad. Sorry about that, man. I was uh, just saying, hey, yo, man, if you guys got questions, let me know. And now I was like, I see you over there, deep fried peanut butter. I was just saying, hope you had a nice, uh, I actually lost my train of thought, but I believe I said, thank you guys for being here. <laughs> I honestly lost my train of thought just right now, man. I too am, uh, yes, completely here. Don't you guys hate that? When you guys are thinking about something and then it's like, you guys have ADD like I do. And then you lose your train of thought because you focus on the next task. And then you're like, I forgot what it was. And rebuild again. I don't want to do that. That's going to be so painful. I have to deconstruct my docks, dude. Oh, God. So we could live inside, but there's no way for us to remove the carbon dioxide. So... Damn, yeah. Such a pain. Or use manual gens. Uh, I don't want them running inside, though. We could call it a, 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 a at-home gym. Wild plant and oxifer. Is oxifer turnover one-to-one? -one? That actually could work. So Oxifern consumes 156 milligrams and gives me 7.8 grams per second. Doesn't that mean it converts less CO2 to more oxygen? And then we convert oxygen into less CO2, right? So we, when we breathe it in, it's a 100 grams per second. 
I believe we breathe out CO2 less than that. I'm trying to see if it bounces out. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because you're going to consume at a rate. Do you get the same oxygen? Is it exactly the same? All right, Fluon, I'm going to trust the math. I'm going to trust the math. We're going to trust the math. It's probably not exactly the same, but it's probably close enough. It's probably close enough. All right. So... Do I want to do a standard room layout? Or do I take room ideas from people in chat? So if you're in chat, let's say you're Cthulhu and you want one of these rooms. You, you lay it out for me. Tell me what you want and I try to fit it in. Or should I just do a standard layout? Usually over overpressure comes from some other CO2, not from the dupes. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. We need more sandstone, by the way. Welcome back, more decks. That conversion is 50 times. So I get 50x more oxygen. That's kind of wild. Looks like we got to make some iron, too. Mordex, have you seen the comics where Dr. Doom becomes a good guy? Gonna need another flashing sign, lol. Oh my god, really? I can actually do that. I actually don't mind setting something like that up. I did not. Oh, it's great, dude. If you haven't seen it, it is great. It is great. I, I, I might have spoiled it for you already, though. <laughs> it's crazy, man. So, so it's basically... They talk about an alternative timeline where... Dr. Doom doesn't become the bad guy, doesn't scar up his face, and doesn't wear the mask. And what happens is, is that... Because that happens... There wasn't something for Reed Richards to fight against. And instead what happens is that Reed Richards becomes the villain. Because he's left to his, his own self for too long. And he didn't have the moral good come out because of the fight with Dr. Doom or something like that. So it's like a, it's a role reverse where Reed Richards, the smartest man in the world, right? the one of the top intellect especially if you watch uh read a lot of marvel comics he's, he's just hands down one of the most genius intellect guys right so the thing with that is is that the f the craziest thing was dr doom knew he couldn't beat reed richards but he fought him anyway it, it was it was crazy oh man i would i would recommend that to you man if you haven't read it yet i gotta find out the name of that story i have one where x-men goes to asteroid m to fight magneto he rips all of the adamantium off wolverine's skeleton introduces his bone claws hey damn that's old school man bone claw wolverine that is old school seeing the new doctor strange the comic or the uh the movie i heard the movie was all right I heard the movie was all right. Don't know if it was all right, though. What is that, Mordax? The multiverse. Reed Richards in it. Oh, what? That's the movie, right? Cthulhu, you're talking about? Does he play a prominent role? I love that they introduced him by his full name. Wait, who was that? Black Agar? A Boltagon? Who is that? Oh, that's Black Bolt's full name. The leader of the Inhumans. 
Oh god. Who who's who's his wife? That that's always there to introduce him? I forgot her name, dude. <laughs> like he's he's got to be one of the most like because of how he's described, super badass. You're in front of Black Bolt, the leader of the humans. I'm uh, the uh, the leader of the Inhumans. You have to understand that if he speaks, planets get destroyed. <laughs> and it's like that. It's like, dude, he will whisper and destroy a planet, something like that, because that's that's his that's his ability. If he screams at you, it's so much like force or something. It just shatters planets. And it depends on which comic you're reading, how strong he is. <laughs> that's the one thing about Black Bolt, dude. He feels bad sometimes. It's Medusa. That's his wife. That's her name, right? Oh man, it's just funny, man. Not not because of how is how he's designed, but it's like, dude, he has a spokesperson <laughs> because his his ability is literally when he talks, he could just destroy stuff. Black Bolt is a pretty cool character, but I feel like his power scaling just goes all over the place, depending on which comic you're reading. And it's a lot of the times he's not even a main bad guy or a main good guy or even a prominent character. It's just he just happens to be there. And he, it's part of the story. All right, all right. So I am going to make a room set up. Probably like that. Marvel had fun after getting all the rights to all that stuff back. Professor X is in it too. Dude, all the cameos. Oh man. Is that what ruined the movie? All the cameos? I could see that being a thing. You know what movie I actually enjoyed? That I don't think was well received. I think it was X Men First Class. The the one where it's uh, young Magneto and young Professor Charles. That was a great movie, man. Yeah, the the cameos didn't bother me. Oh, okay, I heard that the movie was all right though. So what was it about that movie that made it kind of just I? Why couldn't it have been better? I enjoy the new X-Men movies too. Nice, nice. Hated an Apocalypse. Which one was Apocalypse? Is that the one where Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are becoming minor characters? And they killed off Quicksilver? With the fucking... With, with, what is it? A gunshot? Oh, that's the stupidest thing known to man, dude. The way they killed them off Quicksilver, man. Oh, man. That was cringe, dude. This guy walks faster than bullets. That was Ultron. Okay. My bad, my bad. Which one was Apocalypse? Which one was Apocalypse? That one was... Was that the one with Darwin? Was that the one with... I think it was Darwin, right? Olivia Munn as Psylocke? I don't remember that at all. And she's not really that big name of a character. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't remember that at all. Apocalypse is the name of the bad guy in the movie. I know who Apocalypse is in the comics. I don't remember that in the, I don't think I've seen it then. I don't think I've seen Apocalypse, which is probably fine. Not that it's fine, but, you know, I haven't seen it. It feels bad. Oh, Glarvisk, I see you over there. What's wrong, man? Is it because I don't remember the movie? Feels bad. <laughs> it's where he recruits all the bad guys to work for him and gives them more power. Yeah, I did not see that one. Then since I heard it was pretty bad. 
I guess it was not that bad that I missed it. <laughs> not missing too much. It did have a cool Quicksilver speed thing again. Quick serve's always cool. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I've seen that one. I'm just thinking about it, yeah. Guess it's not too bad. Alright, so this is gonna be the bedroom. And we could make a private meal hall. Right below it. It's gonna be very small, though. And then part of me wants to do this for the bathroom. Because we're going to need a wall toilet. Hmm. Private bathrooms. It's going to be done. We got to have to give it to him, boys. Alright, so I think because of how it works, we're going to use plastic right there. And then the wall toilet should go like that. And then we'll get a sink right next to it. I think it's called Days of Future Past or something like that. No, the, the pee disappears. It actually disappears. It doesn't spill outside. I would think it would spill outside too, but it actually doesn't. So it's kind of convenient. Aim for noodles, I see you over there. Days of Future Past. Wasn't that the one where you had Sabretooth? Was that the one with Sabretooth? And, uh, that's a different one. Damn it, dude. There's so many X-Men movies. There's so many X-Men movies, man. I think, yeah, I just think I haven't, I haven't seen the one with Sabretooth, though. I've seen clips of that one. I just think that, yeah, I'm just out of the loop. It feels bad. <laughs> feels bad. They were all young. Days of Future Past was when Shadowcat sent Wolverine's mind back to the 70s. And I think they did Bishop wrong in that movie. God damn it, I don't remember a single thing. I don't remember a single thing. Wait, this is nine tiles? Oh, crap. I need to move that there so we get the room bonus. Not bad, not bad. Comfy bed. We have plastic right there, and then we're going to put carpet underneath. And then we have a room bonus, washroom barracks. And then if I get a decor item in here, it's going to become a bedroom. And then, of course, I'm going to want oxygen in here. Actually, I should pipe it in, huh? Via gas vents. All right, so I do need this. Oh, crap. I think I have to do it this way then. Yeah, that's fine. So with that, I'm going to need some temporary ladders here and here. And then I do need to deconstruct this tile. I might need those as well. In the beginning, I had Pyro, Iceman, Bishop, Warpath, and a teleporter that I can't remember his name of. Uh, teleporter. Nightcrawler? Or was it Nightcrawler's dad? I do not remember Bishop or Warpath at all. I, I want to say I just haven't seen that at all. Completely just don't know.
I have a question, you guys. If I pump my... No, I can't do that, right? I have to have this leave, actually. So I need to do this with a bridge. And then I think we just have to have this come out. And then we go like that. Feels bad. The teleporter made holes you can move through like doorways. What the hell? Was what that could actually be... That'd actually be Nightcrawler's dad, wasn't it? Didn't Nightcrawler's dad have better... Uh, control over the time space? No, Kitty Pride was... If Kitty Pride touches you, uh, you get to phase through objects. Not opening a portal, though. Nightcrawler's dad was Azazel. I, I don't remember Azazel's movies. No, no, no. If she touches you, can't you move through walls as well? Kitty Pride is Shadowcat. Didn't Magneto find out he has a son? Magneto has a son? I don't remember that storyline at all, dude. Dude, I'm missing so much about X-Men. <laughs> I'm missing so much about X-Men, man. Yeah, as long as she holds you, if she lets go, you re-phase where you are. It's Quicksilver. There we go. Wait, doesn't that also mean that Scarlet Witch is also his daughter? <laughs> Magneto has three kids? Who's the third kid? Who is the third kid? I think this is not bad. We have the, the room right there. We have the pipeline, but I think we could put some furniture on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quicksilver Witch and a chick that wears green and yellow. Green and yellow? Is that Rogue? That's the movie I was thinking of, Days of Futures Past. Ah, oh, I see you guys. Blink? That, that's a that's a term for teleporting. <laughs> Polaris? Who's Polaris? Is that the chick in the green and yellow? We put a granite statue here, and then a small sculpting block out of granite for the restroom. No, but Magneto and Rogue did have a thing. Polaris. Magnetic power. Wait, 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 wait. That's, that's, that's the last child. Is that the last child? Who is Polaris? I'm so confused. Yeah, that's the third kid. All right, all right. All right, so this is going to be the bedroom, I think. I'm thinking whether or not I should have a place right here for like a little ledge maybe as a meal hall I think we'll just keep it like this for now though and then we just got to release oxygen and then I got to plant an oxifern oh crap how do I plant an oxifern in here oh crap She's kind of a minor X-Men character, magnetic powers like Magneto. Okay. Third child, yes. Okay, okay. Alright. I think I have an idea on how I need to do this now. Ah, it sucks. I need to put a... Oh, damn it. Yeah. I gotta redo this. Because I forgot I need to put the Oxifern in here. And it's not really going to work out if I have everything where they're at right now. It feels bad. 
All right, let's get some more progress done. Take the Arbor Acorns. She's kind of a minor X-Men character, has magnetic powers like Magneto. I feel like I've never heard of that character name, even in the comics. Feels weird, man. But honestly, I don't think I've ever heard of that name. Polaris. Right, let's get that vacuum down. We're gonna move our petrol gens into there. Shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. And I will want to get this done. Alright, so let's get rid of this and the plastic. We'll leave the ladder there. We'll take down the bottom one. And we can leave the vent in there. Should be fine. I want to actually have carpet on the bottom floor. It's a little bit of a weird idea. I think it's going to be worth it. Because it's like, we have space. <laughs> we have space, so might as well. Pictures in Discord. Scarlet Witch is the only one I recognize. <laughs> Quicksilver doesn't even look like Quicksilver, man. I mean, he kind of does, but I, I guess. Him in the suit looks kind of off to me. <sighs> Alright, so... I want to do a natural tile in here so that the Pip could plant an Oxifer. I think we're going to have granite floors. And if I do this, can they leave? That's a good question. If I put a tile right here, can they come in and leave? Or does that block them out? I guess we'll find out. Looks like the CO2 needs to be rerouted slightly. Shouldn't be too bad. We'll set this up right now. Oh. Oh, that's fine. New filter box. There we go. I see you guys over there, man. I feel like I'm missing out on the, the X-Men comics. <laughs> I feel like I'm missing so much knowledge. What's your guys' favorite comic book story? It could be as simple as, you know, the story of how Batman came to be. It could be maybe a uh, more recent one. Maybe it could be something like the Illuminati series. What happens when Thano loses and the years that come after the Infinity Stones are in the powers of humans, in the hands of humans, things like that. What's you guys' favorite story arc for the comics? The Illuminati series was pretty interesting. Because, man, having the Infinity Stones is wild. I'm not going to lie, man. They, they introduced a lot of superheroes. Not introduced. They had a lot of superheroes in that arc. But they were willing to kill off all of them. <laughs> that was probably one thing I'm kind of like okay with. If they introduce characters and they get killed off, that's actually fine. Due to how how often they do a lot of like, not retconning, they do that though. But you know, blow up the universe to retell the stories. So that they could set precedent for a better story. Oh, that, re that reminds me. I think there was, um... I think it was, uh... No one could actually sweep this. Actually. Can I build this here? No one could actually build this. Am I locked in? Is no one able to come in anymore? No, you guys could come in still. So I do need to have this tile gone. 
or else they can't actually build this tile. Okay. So, you know, we did it for science. Which means we can actually have the wall toilet here now. Dude, he just teleported in. You got it, Tannin. Nice. Alright, wall toilet here. Probably remove that. And then bring the pipeline down. Bring this up. And then that's going to be the sink. Alright. So that does mean that my spot above me has to be lower. Which I'm okay with. And I do have to have this here. Okay. So this is 912. So I could have my door here. Technically, it could be like that. And then we do four tiles here. Or we do the ladder here, like that, and then we have a low rise. And then we could have the bed right here. Bed by the window. And then we could put a statue here, potentially like a phone, mess table, and that combination over here as well. And then we would put the oxy fern right in front. So that's going to be this tile. Technically, I got to get rid of that and this and this. I probably... Yeah, I do need to deconstruct that. Favorite comic storyline of Ark or whatever it is a tie of Frank Miller's Dark Knight and Spawn. Huh. It reminds me of a character that was very minor called Deadshot. That was supposed to be Spawn, but in the different universe. <laughs> I don't know why they remind me of that guy. You know how in the in the different conover, uh, comic book universes, they have no, it wasn't it wasn't Spawn. I think it was Deadpool. They have ripoffs. They have ripoff characters that the other uh, franchise makes sometimes. Have you seen that, Mordex? Like, they'll introduce a new character, but it was because it's it's supposed to be made as a copy of the other franchise's character. Yeah, yeah, Deadshot and Deadpool. There we go. I mixed up Spawn with Deadpool. Sorry about that. Slade and Wade Wilson. Dude, even the names are close. All right, I think this is going to be the layout. And then we could potentially have a mess table here. All right, so we got to continue vacuuming up. Got to do the things we got to do. I should start getting away from mealwood, but I think we're okay. And for the most part, the suits are looking all right. Once the vacuum's done, we'll move the petrol gens. And then I think the thing I want to do with this is that we will still convert this into industrial brick. And we'll have the transformers over here generating heat in a separate room. Same thing with the smart battery. That way we could just build the wires through the wall. And then it's going to be a little bit better, I think. I might want to do a vacuum pocket. That's one thing I might go for. The vacuum pocket is going to be because it allows for no heat transfer. So I'm thinking about that. If we are going to use a... Uh, industrial brick over here. That's probably going to be very attractive. Spot from the 90s was a corporate hitman. He was sent to hell. And gave him unlimited power. Only limited supply of them. How does spawn work? Is he just unkillable, but he has limited lives or something? 
I don't know much about Spawn, to be honest. Not that it's like he wasn't popular. They just don't do a like shows for him. Like growing up as a kid, there was Spider-Man, Batman, Justice League. There was not much about Spawn. You could say that about a lot of characters too. Like the Punisher, things like that. He was supposed to be the general of the armies of hell. Do I have even enough Oxiferns? I'm actually not sure. Dark Horse Comics. That wasn't even DC. <laughs> Oh man, when you're that minor, dude. Alright, we gotta move one of those pips inside. Image, actually, created by Todd McFarlane. That's all I know about him, though. Haven't actually read many comics. Comics were cool, they were just expensive. Not really minor. He made bank off that character. Oh, interesting. Mookie knows about Spawn. I guess back in the day he was mad popular. When my generation started, like, checking out the cartoons and stuff, and then maybe getting into comics, it was too expensive, man. Holy crap. Oh, Mamba's awake. I hear the babies. I hear you, Mamba. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Watchmen was real good, dude, man. Did they move them? Where's the pit? I know I wrangled them. Oh my god, where's the pit? No deliveries, they dropped them. Roshock. Roshark. R-O-S-H-A-R-C-K or something like that. It's based off of the uh, blob test. Giant Blue, what's that? I saw the Spawn movie and loved the character, but never bought the comics. Rorschach, there we go. The thing about the comics is that it felt like I was paying $5 per episode. Right? Because you only get one volume, and it's like, it's a good amount of work you have to put into that one volume. But the problem is, is that you, you only get one volume, and it doesn't last. <laughs> so, like, not even $5, like, $5, $10, and it's like, oh, man, that's per episode, man, that's too expensive. There we go, Rorschach. Cthulhu coming out with the uh, spellings I see over there. Dude, Ramble, what's giant blue? What is that? What are you talking about? What is the giant blue? If I remember correctly, all the heroes from Watchmen... What the hell just happened? Someone just died? Oh, I left them out! No! <laughs> So man, this could have been Cthulhu. We left him to die because he starved. Just like that. Cthulhu, man, you gotta replace him. <laughs> oh man, first death. You know what? We gotta take that. We got we gotta find a place for him to get buried though now. Oh man. Dude, man, talking about comics, I stopped paying attention to the game. Alright, man, we gotta bury him, dude. We gotta bury him. I can't give him a refund, man. Damn it, man. That was a researcher rocket tree guy. Those guys are kind of rare. Alright. I need to find a spot that we could dedicate as a graveyard. I think it works back here.
That's why I didn't take the researcher. You know what's fucked up? I could actually force the rocket to land, and he's we're just gonna grab the body. Huge rip, boys. We took an L today. Alright, we gotta pay attention to the colony a little bit better. <laughs> oh, God. Feels bad, guys. Well, the good news is I am able to take a dupe now. And I believe Eric is actually waiting on the list. Feels bad, man. Ghost Rider. Thank you, thank you. Oh, man. We, we, we let him starve. I can't believe it. <sighs> oh, man. I feel kind of bad, man. Because that's 100% my fault. <laughs> that's 100% my fault. Oh, man. It really do be like that sometimes. All right, we need them plant the oxyphern. Come on, guys. There's only one tile for you guys to build. All right, all right. Let's see, let's see. We need a new researcher. Oh, God. Okay. So I need someone with rocketry and science so that I could just send one guy and not a couple of people. <gasps> Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow. Good luck, buddy. Looks like you're going to be the new researcher. Yep. Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow. Good luck, man. He even has a high morale requirement. Oh, that's going to be tough. Well, hopefully we're going to be able to handle that. Oh my god. Pretty sure making data banks is just an operating job. Oh. I mean, I need him to be able to launch the rocket though. You can't launch without a pilot. Is this operating? It is. Not bad, not bad. But you need the skill. Without data analysis... Oh, wait. Is it data analysis? You don't need the skill to do the data lab collection. Uh -oh. So a normal rocket pilot could do it? That's actually... I didn't know. I thought you always needed the skill to collect data banks. Today I learned, boys. Today I learned. Alright, so... Feels bad, Gorbash. If you're here, I'm sorry, man. The actual research requires a skill. Well, I guess we did need that. We're still gonna send Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow to do the rocket stuff, though. <laughs> Actually, I might... I might not... Be... Ah, oh, man. If he's my only researcher, it's not worth it for me to send him. Because I'm researching still. Okay, we have Tanit. That could do a little bit of the research. And then outside of that, I need a rocket pilot. Cyberdyne? Yeah! Alright, Cyberdyne. We'll have you go instead. And he's off! We won't forget about you this time. <laughs> I'm gonna forget about him again, man. I'm pretty sure. That's actually a vacuum still. Nice. Alright, so Cyberdyne's off. We should be okay. We should be okay. 
So we're going to do our data bank research right there. We're going to still continue to vacuum. Waiting for the dupes, man. Alright, so we do want to remove this. Because we're not going to need this anyways. 